Welcome everyone. I'm Jason Jensen. Today's episode is actually part two of building a sci-fi diorama. Now the purpose of my diorama is to display a bunch of my action figures and toys. Uh, more specifically, my Star Wars action figures, G.I. Joe, um, I have lots of robots. Uh, but this diorama could also be used for tabletop gaming. And the techniques that I'm showing you can really be used for any scale modeling. All right, well, we have a lot to cover today, so let's get to it. So here's the diorama so far. And again, this is two feet by four feet. Now, don't worry, I'm going to back up and show you how I painted all this. I'll go into detail and show you how I make everything look like rusted metal. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how to make these look like rusted metal. And I just ordered this bucket um, online. Okay, so we're starting to paint the metal pipes. And I'm using a metallic color, gunmetal gray. And again, it's metallic. And I'm using sponge and sponging it on. Now, I don't know if you can see, but it gives it a texture. So the trick is to have it painted gray to begin with. Uh, I used a gray primer, but you could also use a black primer and then put this over the top of it. It would probably even give it more of a textured look. Then we'll use silver, also metallic. Hopefully you can see that. So again, with the silver, we're only going to do the top. I mean, like the front. We're not going to go all the way around like we did with the uh, gunmetal. Now when I did the gunmetal on this, I also had to use a, a small sponge to get into little cracks and corners, little hard to reach places. Okay, so let's start to add some rust to these pipes. I already have a few done, so I'll show you what it looks like when they're finished. Okay, so I've got a lot of colors here, and we may or may not use all of them, but I want to be prepared. So we have antique gold, yellow ochre would work also, basically the same color, raw sienna, burnt sienna, antique maroon, Burnt Umber, Bittersweet Chocolate, Black, and then uh, an AK product. Okay, we'll start with these little ones. And I'm just using a piece of paper for my palette. A little more yellow. Probably 50-50 on the Anti Gold and the Raw Sienna. Okay, now we're gonna use a, a sponge and you can just use a grout sponge from a hardware store. And you can go as heavy or as light as you want. 
kind of important to know how it goes on your diorama. So it'll sit like this. So this is the top. So we'll go right down the center. Heavy right on the corner and then down the center again. We'll now switch to burnt sienna. Just using the same sponge. So we're just going a little, a little bit less with this one. So we're basically going over all of the areas that we just did, uh, but we're just doing less of it. Now this is something that just takes practice. Um, the more stuff you rust, the better you're going to get. And another important thing is to find some photo reference. Uh, before I started this project, uh, I looked at a lot of images of rusted items. Sometimes uh, on my phone, I'll do a Google search for like rusted pipes and then I'll leave a couple images open on my phone and have it sitting right next to me and really try to copy it. Okay, now we're going to switch to antique maroon. And for this, we're going to use a smaller sponge. That way we have a little bit more control over where it's going. Each color gets less and less. And we'll probably skip the burnt umber and move right to bittersweet chocolate after this. Now you don't want them to all look the same, so you want to do some a little heavier. Get our brush a little bit wet. And we're going to go around the edge. It's probably hard to tell. So I painted the edge right on there. And then on this surface, I painted. So now we have a thin line right across there. And we're going to come back and paint that in with the uh, crusted rust. Let me show you on the finished one. We're creating that line across it. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, I am going to go back in with some burnt sienna, doing a light wash over some of that um, AK product that we just put on. So you can see it's pretty, uh, it's almost kind of like a peach color. And we're going to go over some of that. Not all of it. just to tone it down a little bit. So again, I'm just using burnt sienna uh, with water, a lot of water in it. The AK product has a nice texture to it. So it's kind of rough. So when you put this wash over it, it really makes it stand out. Now we'll get the pastel chalks. So I'm using an orange color. Okay, so I'm using a flat brush, so you can go wide or you can go thin with it. So just scrub it over the pastel.
And we're just dragging it down over the AK product. Now this AK stuff is rough. It's leaving a rough texture on it. So when we brush over the area with the uh, pastel chalk, it sticks to it. Okay, so using the same technique, I rusted these tanks. Now the tanks themselves, I sprayed a, uh, a dark blue, it's called Surf, and then I did a misting over the top of a lighter blue called Aqua. I then used the same exact technique as I just showed you over this. Now these go side by side and then our pipe that we rusted sits on there like that. So I'm so excited to finally be starting on uh, the walls. I've really been looking forward to working on these panels. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've masked off these sections and I'm going to put black and yellow caution stripes on here. And I'm going to use antique gold. And I'm going to use a sponge because I want it to look old and uh, make it look like it's chipping off. Okay, now we'll mask off our stripes. And I want the top of these to be solid yellow. So we're going to mask off that. Okay, so I've got it all masked off and I didn't want to paint them a solid black. So I mixed zinc gray and a little bit of black with it to make a really dark, dark gray. This just gives it a old faded look. So I'm getting some of the solid colors painted. Um, now we'll put a metallic uh, gunmetal over this. And then we'll weather this with some grays. But I'm just getting some solid colors put on there. Just to kind of separate everything. Um, now I'm going to do a wash over the vents here. Okay, now we'll use gunmetal gray. Okay, now we're going to do some chipping with bittersweet chocolate.
Okay, so I think this section is done. It's hard to know when to stop. But I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so the wall section is done. It took quite a bit of time. I'll show you up close what it looks like. And again, I think the uh, success for the rust at the bottom was first putting texture on it. Um, I had mentioned I put super glue on it and then sprinkled on some baking soda. And it gave it a really cool texture. Well, as you can see, I've also been working on the towers. Okay, so I've got some more panels that I've started. And like everything else, I first got a gray primer. I then used um, a blue, it's kind of a teal. It's called Surf. Then I did a very light misting of a lighter teal called Aqua. I'm just starting with raw sienna. Now these go on the back wall of the diorama and so I'm not putting as much detail or as work in these as I am on stuff in the foreground. Because a lot of this does get covered up there's a lot of stuff in front of it, so it's not real visible. Okay, now we'll switch to Burnt Sienna. And we can actually use our same sponge, using the same corner. I'm not going to do a lot of this. And again, a, the big trick to this is doing research on the internet and looking at as many photos as you can of rusted metal. And then really just trying to copy that look. Okay, now we'll switch to Antique Maroon. This is kind of a newer color that I've been using lately and I really, really like it. it really has a nice reddish old rust look to it. Now at this point it is looking kind of bright. We're going to tone it down with the uh, bittersweet chocolate. Okay now we'll go back to our original bittersweet chocolate and maybe we'll just do a wash. We won't even use the sponge. And any areas that you think maybe are a little too bright, you just put this wash over it. And you can see I'm not doing a solid, I'm just kind of dabbing my brush. I'm going heavier on the back side of these. Um, really just sort of to create a shadow. Okay, let me hold these up. Okay, so I've got my pastel. 
kind of an orange terracotta color. You just want to scrub your brush over it. So I just painted these using the same techniques that I just showed you. I don't know if it shows, but I've been uh, working on dirtying up the concrete floor. Uh, the doors here on top, I made these out of thin plastic. And this is the plastic that I use. It's from Evergreen Scale Models. Um, this, I believe you get three sheets for $4.59. Yeah, three sheets. And then I just cut out the different shapes that I wanted, glued it all together with uh, Tester's model glue, and then just painted it. Now I still have to put weathering on the catwalk here, and then I'm gonna put railings all along the edge of this on both sides. And the railings will be painted uh, the safety yellow. And I'll put dirt, grime, and rust on it. But the railings will go all the way across. Um, I have to create a, a better step down. And <laughs> that looks better than just that. That's just temporary. Um, and then I'll put railings all along the edge of here too. Now my plan is to actually put a lid on this. It's going to be raised probably about an inch. And then there'll be a roof on this. And then there'll be all pipes that run the full length. And then chains that hang down also. And then I'll also put... Um, lights some tube lighting up on that uh, ceiling so this will all be lit and then inside here there'll be lighting too so the light comes up through those grates i have four panels that go against that wall there that have pipes that come down that connect to these uh, grates and there are the four panels. Uh, those get heavily rusted and then glued to that back wall. Uh, and then the last thing will be to put all the water in down here. Now this side over here, I'm considering doing um, stone or brick since this is the sewer um, this side over here 
uh, will be, like I said, stone or brick. I just haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with this area. So I've primered the fan, and this fan gets put in place right here. Now I have to cut this out and I have to cut a section out right here so that that fan sits down lower. And then I'll put a little walkway just like this. So I've placed some figures just to give you an idea of the scale. Now the figures will have to be painted and dirtied up so they don't look out of place. I want them to uh, match the diorama. Wow, we covered a lot of information today. This is really not that hard. It really just takes practice and doing some research on the internet, uh, finding real life objects, real life rust, and trying to copy that or replicate it. So I think a lot of people just have to get past that initial fear, just jump into it and don't compare yourself to others. Just do it in the way that you want to do it, that you're comfortable with. Well, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and until next time, Stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.